The next part of the installation involved digging the trenches down to 800 millimetres, putting in a bed of 100 millimetres of soft sand, then installing the pipework. Here you can see the main manifold sat in an 800 millimetre trench that will take the pipework from the ground source loops and supply the heat pump within the property. Here we can see this is the main return from the heat pump within the property that goes through the manifold, back down through the loop, warms up in the ground and comes back through the manifold again, back through this main flow to the heat pump itself. With the top of the manifold off you can see how the ground loops are all connected together through the main flows into the property and return back from the property back down to the loops. Each one of these connections represents a flow and a return to each ground source loop. After the pipework has been laid out, we then fusion weld bends to the top of the loops, then lay them across to the actual manifold, which then go goes back from the manifold into the property itself with as little bends as possible. Because what we're trying to do is obtain an equal flow into the manifold and back out again to the main pipework that enters the property into the heat pump itself. The last thing to do before we backfill the trenches is to connect into the main flow and return to the heat pump within the building. On this, uh, on this installation we've got, we've got four boreholes. Uh, the borehole manufacturers that came in and did the drilling, uh, they've actually pre-tested the boreholes so we know they're okay. So what we're going to physically be doing today is just press a test in the pipe work that's at the surface level. The pressure testing is there to make sure that the pipes are okay once they're in the floor. Uh, once we've backfilled, we don't want to be coming back to them. So the pipes get pressure tested for a period of time. Normally it's a minimum of about an hour, uh, but the longer you can leave it, the better. The reason for that is once we've done it, we, we know for 100% satisfaction that the pipes underground are okay. The reason we use water rather than air to test is in case in the pipes that have been installed there's any rubble, debris, uh, dirt, bits of plastic, things like that. The water will naturally flush it through into the collection bin. Now we're at a stage now where we're going to start putting the brine in. Firstly what we need to do, refractometer, we need this. Uh, this little device will tell us at what antifreeze level we have in the brine. I'm going to suck some brine up and then a few drips onto the little lens. Close the lens and then read through it and we've actually got in there we've got about minus 17 degrees. So now we've got the collection bin full of brine and water it's mixed to approximately minus 17 but even though it's in here and it's ready to go into the system we've now got to mix it in the collection bin if we did pump it straight into the system as it was the system would pump round as brine and water and it wouldn't be in a mixed form so all we need to do is on the front here on the collection bucket we have two valves we have to shut that one open that one and all we're going to do now is circulate the brine round the actual collection bin. We're now going to pump the brine in. The brine goes in behind the water uh, and simply just pushes the water out of the system as the brine fills up the system. Because this is the water that's coming out of the loop uh, that we're pushing the brine in behind. Eventually this water will turn to brine. You can see at the moment it's just clear water. And then if we leave it running, what you will find eventually, and don't forget you've got to go all the way around one loop as well, so it's not going to be a, an instant thing, but you will notice it will go from clear water to a red liquid virtually instantly. We have got four loops on this system. Uh, so what we will have to do is fill each loop up individually. Uh, you won't just be able to do all four together. So you have to shut three off, work on one, 
make sure that brine uh, that loop is full of brine once you're happy with that one close that loop off then move on to the second then on to the third then on to the fourth the brine that is now in the system uh, it's throughout all the loops we're happy with that so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up the loops to run uh, with the system and we're going to leave the loops to run along with the system for a period of time and all we want to do in that period of time is to get all the residue air out of the system. Now everything's complete, we've got all the loops set up, uh, we know we've got no air in the system, we've basically now we've finished with the collection bucket, uh, we can put that away now, pack everything away, we now move to the heat pump because there's a few settings within the heat pump that we have to activate and we have to activate them settings for the heat pump to take over from where the collection bucket left off and that is then simply uh, a 10 day uh, de-aeration process.